So could you briefly tell us what is the core idea you want uh, the readers to take away from that book? The core idea is that the a whole set of problems that we're dealing with, uh, whether it's income disparities or climate change or globalization or all kinds of other things, I believe have common cause. And, and the common cause is the imbalance in society and in the, and in the world, world. And, uh, and it comes from, I think it's, it stems from many things, but I think the triggering, triggering force was the, um, wait, let me just take a note, note here. The, I think the triggering force was the, uh, hang on, was the 1989 fall of the Berlin Wall um, because it was misinterpreted. Um, the belief was that capitalism had triumphed over communism. And I think that's dead wrong. I think that balance had triumphed over imbalance, that the Eastern European countries were completely out of balance on the side of government or the pro public sector. And the successful companies, countries of the West balanced their societies across public, private, and what I call plural, plural meaning community. Uh, or, or sort of not-for-profits and NGOs and co-ops and social enterprises and that whole array of things that's neither business nor government. And it's huge, but obscure because we've been spending a century or more going back and forth between left and right, public and private, without recognizing there's a third leg that needs to keep this stool balanced. And that's, and I call it the plural sector. The, the, the countries of the West were balanced in the sense the U.S. had very high tax rates in the 1970s that had extensive welfare programs. Um, but the belief that capitalism has triumphed has enabled capitalism to triumph ever since. And, um, and now the Western countries and the U.S. probably worst of all, U.S. and U.K. probably worst of all, have gone completely out of bounds on the side of private sector forces. I mean, the Supreme Court of the United States in 2010 legalized bribery, essentially. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it just opened the floodgates to private donations, and every, everybody in Congress can now be bought. Um, and uh, and uh, so, so, um, so uh, we need to restore balance in society. Great. So, and by balance, you do mean balance among three things, not just two things, right? Three, three sectors, private, public, and what do you call plural sectors? Exactly. Okay. And I know the book was published in 2015. Uh, it was instant sensation. And I was at uh, one of your symposiums at AOM where there were like, I don't know, 300 people there. I, people were sitting on the ground, <laughs> leaning on the walls. Now, seven years have, uh, six years have gone by. Have you seen any progress? You know what a good friend of mine says that, um, uh, that I'm always six years ahead of my time. Uh, this is the sixth year. So, okay. so uh, um, in the sense that um, there's, there's a lot more uptake, uh, all kinds of things are going on now. The, the president of Colombia wants to have a, a workshop on this. Uh, um, a woman in England who, who has put materials into 300,000 schools, uh, not universities, but schools wants, wants, uh, is doing a, a module on rebalancing society. So things are happening, um, not as much as I'd like, but it's starting, it's picking up. And Victor Chen, even Victor Chen does. So, you know, you... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something on my own called a multi-stakeholder framework on GoPeaks. And I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, partially inspired by your idea of, uh, yeah, of I mean, balancing. Yeah, he, he's managed to get 30 doctoral students to listen to this. So that, that's an indication. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, in, in our, uh, in business school, and most people study the private sector, right? Most, most people study the, uh, the for-profit organizations. So how does your, the tripod framework, um, sort of uh, change the ways in which we think about the private sector, well, change the way in which we define performance or missions of the private sector. Well, the first thing to understand, which is the, the prevalent view in the United States today, especially in business schools, uh, is that the, the problem is that we have to fix capitalism. Uh, 
And there is no question that we have to fix capitalism, but fixing capitalism will not rebalance society uh, because it's society that needs to be fixed. Um, we don't need to fix, I, I mean, we do need to fix the private sector, but that won't fix the balance. The, the balance will be fixed when we recognize the plural sector and, and, and recognize the role that the public sector has to play and so on. Uh, America is doubly cursed because there's, there's a age old belief that government is bad and business is good. Um, and uh, uh, that makes it very difficult to recognize that you need what I call respected governments and responsible businesses and robust enterprises. That's balance. and. Uh, uh, you know, I have a collection of what I call adjectival capitalism. Um, there are at least, I, every few weeks I get another one. I mean, there are so many proposals to fix capitalism, caring capitalism, progressive capitalism. Uh, uh, I don't know, that's just, I, I've got them all listed somewhere. It's a joke. It's really a joke. And, uh, and, and the best one is democratic capitalism. Um, which gives away the, the idea that capitalism is what matters, not democracy, because capitalism is the noun and democracy is the adjective. Unknown caller. Uh, oh. So you got, you got another proposal, I'm afraid. Yeah, somebody who wants to do something big. I've been getting a bit of spam calls too. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, you know, tell here's, me a, here's a one question from, from the audience. Uh, Jomana wants to ask. Uh, so what is your thoughts on how to keep these three legs separate? Because it seems the lines between them are blurred. Well, should we blur them or should we keep them separate? That's an interesting question. That came up very early because I was going around giving talks before I published the book. Um, and, and somebody, a very smart guy in, in Costa Rica, he said, um, he said uh, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're proposing them to be separate, but shouldn't shouldn't they be sort of blended into one? And I said, not as long as one sector is more powerful than the other, um, because if they, you know, sit 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 people from the three sectors together, and guess who's going to dominate the conversation? Especially in the United States, the private sector just assumes it knows better. This 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 kind of dumb belief that that business knows better than government. Business knows business better, and government knows government better. And business, we no longer, we no more need business running government. And Trump was an example. Than we need government running business. Um, we, we we've got to do that. So now, now Japan is an interesting case because the plural sector is fairly weak. No, it's not weak. It's just not as strong in Japan as other countries, and yet it's quite a balanced society. But somebody pointed out, a group of Japanese pointed out that. The the the, uh, the, uh, the 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 private and, and particularly the, the particularly the private and also the public sector incorporate the plural sector. That that there's a whole sense of community that's very strong in the private sector. So in a sense, they blend more in Japan. But historically, they've <clears throat> done that. But take a country like America that historically has prejudiced business privileged business, um, uh, probably prejudiced too. And, um, and, and, and you can't get to, they, they've got to, it's got to work cooperatively and they've got to work together. I agree with that, but each with its own strength and not, and not uh, sort of ignoring the differences. And how do you comment on the for-profit organizations that carry uh, social missions? So is that a good thing or bad thing? Well, that's fine. I mean, they have to serve their their investors, and they have to serve their bottom line. Um, and some of them can do it uh, with with uh, noble missions. So that's great. Um, and and all of them can be decent. It's not a question of expecting a chocolate bar company to engage in social welfare. Um, but it is to be expected that it will be engaged responsibly. For example, in the amount of sugar they put into their chocolate bars and mm -hmm. what's that doing to the kids? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And also you, you seem to, I mean, one of the early, uh, earlier comments uh, seems to suggest the plural sector was relatively overlooked or underdeveloped. So what do you mean by developing plural sectors? 
Well, it, it's obscure. Um, it's obscure. It's huge. It's huge. I'll bet nobody listening to this, I'll bet not one of you listening to this has interacted with fewer than five, maybe 10 plural sector organizations in the last week, maybe in the last two days, you know, maybe you worked out at the Y. I don't know if the university is a state university or not, but many of them are in the US are plural. Harvard, McGill, they're all plural sector universities. Uh, Michigan's not, uh, uh, Pennsylvania's not, but many are. Um, you know, we work out at the Y, we donate to Greenpeace, we, uh, we have our clubs, uh, uh, maybe we're members of the IRA because after uh, the, uh, I mean, the right from NRA, uh, because after all, that's a plural sector organization. They're not all good. <laughs> uh, some of them, I think, do some terrible things. Um, but, uh, um, but if you belong to that, you belong to a plural sector organization. Uh, if you yeah, use so Wikipedia recently, uh, you were on a plural sector organization. Nobody owns it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, the ownership of plural sector is interesting because some are owned by members, like co-ops, but many are owned by nobody. Nobody owns Harvard. Nobody owns the Mayo Clinic. Uh, nobody. It, these are non-owned Greenpeace. These are non-owned organizations, many. So, so the, the sector is huge. The number of social initiatives that people undertake, which are in this sector, are probably more than ever before in human history. And yet... And yet, it's, it's just as a sector, it's obscure. And part of the problem is that when the private sector wants something, when, when companies want something, they know how to cooperate. They get together in Davos or with their chambers of commerce, and they collaborate. <clears throat> Plural sector organizations are often suspicious of each other, and they don't collaborate. And until they do, we won't get a rebalancing. Mm. And also, we probably need collaborations across sectors, as you mentioned. Can you give one example? Can you give yeah. one example of a healthy collaboration between, say, a plural sector player and a business? Well, let's take something that people may have on their minds, COVID. Um, the countries that have done well with COVID, uh, I think, have subscribed to the following, that government is in the business of protecting us. Business, business is in the business side. Government role is to protect us. Business role is to supply us. Community role is to engage us. The countries that have done well with COVID have, have, and they have let governments take a lead role in this. It's been absolutely critical compared to what, compared to what Trump did or Bolsonaro in Brazil. All the, all the disaster areas are with governments that think they shouldn't do anything. Alberta and Canada is ter terrible. These very right wing, and this isn't right wing, left wing problem, but but these very right wing, also people who think individualism is a private sector view. I, me, and nobody else, and and the vaccine deniers are basically examples of individualism run rampant. Uh, so if you want to jump off a bridge, that's your business. I mean, I'll try and stop you, but that's your business. But if you want to jump off a bridge and jump on me, that's my business. And people who aren't taking vaccinations, if they want to, you know, free their bloodstreams of vaccinations, that's one thing. But if they want to infect me, that's something else. And, 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 and so, so we need the, so there's, it's a perfect example of where the sectors have worked together effectively and where they haven't worked together. And businesses have been supplying, they've been supplying ventilators and gloves and masks and all that. And communities have been getting people together to get them vaccinated and so on. Um, and governments have been supplying the vaccines and so on. Now, we all live, no matter whether we work for the public or the private sectors, we all live in the community, right? We all live in the plural sector. So yeah. what, 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 first, uh, you, you, you seem to suggest uh, now the three sectors are relatively fragmented. They, they don't communicate. They don't uh, work well together. So what, what, what is the reason for such fragmentation? How do, well, we, how do we solve it? It's an interesting question because the very same person, you can be the chief executive of a company who works in the private sector and does everything he can for the private sector, but he goes home and you know uh, works out at the Y, or she goes home and works out at the Y, and so on. So, 
so but but uh, they're fragmented in their own souls you know because they don't they don't function as if community matters some some do some don't some of them don't function the way community as if community matters so the fragmentation is right in our own bodies you know we 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 vote in the public sector we purchase in the private sector we play in the plural sector but we even personally we keep these things apart Mm -hmm. How do we change that? Uh, I change it by writing books. Uh, you change it by having inviting me, you to talk about your books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by letting me uh, letting me propagandize with your students. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I try to pick up several questions from the, uh, the audience. So uh, the the two questions that are similar: uh, What is the government's role? In all of this, and you talk about government is uh, corrupt. So, so well, what is government's role in this equation? Uh, well, I don't say government is corrupt. I don't think the Canadian government is particularly corrupt. I don't think the New Zealand government is particularly corrupt, or the Danish government, or the German government, uh, or the French government. Uh, I don't think they're particularly corrupt. I think many governments are corrupt, uh, starting with the, not so much the president of the United States today, but certainly Congress. Uh, the corruption is 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 dreadful. I mean, uh, America is destroying its democracy. You know, the Economist does a, a an index of democracies, and and every country in the world is ranked, and uh, and they fall into four categories: full democracies, flawed democracies, hybrid regimes, and autocratic regimes. The U.S. is not a full democracy on that li list. So. And that's the corruption, the gerrymandering that's going on now. You know, reports in Texas where not only are they doing what they're doing, uh, minorities dominate, you know, dictating to majorities in some ways, but they're gerrymandering so that they can't ever be gotten rid of in some ways. So, so uh, what's the question again? I think you you, you answered the question. So so not not a government. Good question is uh, uh, what's the role of the government in helping the other well, tax sectors? Government is government protects us. You know, you find me the most extreme right wing person, and I'll say, well, all right, let's get rid of the police force, get rid of the army. Let, let me tell you a story about the U.S. Army. Okay, I went to a party in rural Virginia once, <clears throat> and these guys were going on and on and on and on stop about taxes and government and government. They just they were just like, finally, I said, wait a minute, you're all retired army people. You've never earned a nickel outside of these taxes in this government. What the hell are you talking about? You know, but that's the people. You talk about separating, eh? I hate the government, but everything I earn comes from the government. That Talk about separating. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to be responsible for your time. So, Henry, thank you so much. We are uh, right at 3 p.m. Uh, then uh, uh, I hope to. If uh, if you're able to, we can go a bit longer if you want. Yeah, yeah. let's maybe it could be a bit longer. So we we do have a few more minutes. Uh, I have two more questions coming. Um, so how do you? So how does plurality work? How does your idea work in a global context? How does how does the three sectors work in work the in the in a in a global context? We need countervailing power. John Kenneth the Galbraith is an economist who wrote about countervailing powers, that when big corporations arose, big unions arose to countervail. We don't have a countervailing power to globalization. We have, we have the unions are certainly weak, especially globally, and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the UN is hardly a countervailing power to globalization. Globalization is economic globalization. It's about economic forces. You know, you can have social or cultural globalization, but, but we're really talking about economic globalization. There's nothing to stop it until, until there's something to constrain it. I'm sort of working on an idea now that you take these countries, the 23 countries that are in the full democracy uh, index of the economists, and why don't they get together? Why is it G20? Why is it G7? These are all rich, uh, big countries. Uh, how about the democracy of the world getting together? and acting as a countervailing power. And most of them are small. You know, first on the list is Norway. Uh, New Zealand's right up near the top. Every Scandinavian country is near the top. There are a whole bunch of countries that people would be surprised to be on that list unless they knew them. Uruguay is one. 
Costa Rica is another. Costa Rica got rid of its military in 1947. Um, Botswana is on that list. Taiwan is on that list. South Korea is on that list. I mean, but there are a lot of tiny, uh, quite remarkable countries on that list. So why don't they get together? Mm -hmm. Here's another question, interesting question, I think, from Jomana. So uh, many rich families uh, earn money from the private for-profit sector businesses, and they, they, they form uh, mission-driven organizations like, like Chen Zuckerberg, uh, initiative and and family offices with a with a mission. How would you characterize that into your three leg picture? Is that a fourth leg? Something is different. That is that a fourth different leg, or is is, oh, is no, part of the three legs? Charities? You're talking about the charities that Gates and people have made. No, no, they're plural set. They're obviously they're not for profit. They're not owned even by Gates. Uh, he's not he's not the owner. Once he gives the money away. Um, no, they're plural set there quite clearly. They're not government, they're not private, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, they're mission driven, but so is Greenpeace, so is, you know, so is Doctors Without Borders, so are all kinds of organizations are, are, are mission driven like that. Their charities are in that category, except for Trump's categories. Trump's uh, charities, which are just fronts for, look like they're fronts for his, uh, for his business activities. Mm -hmm. Question from Mac. So this is DBA program. It's, it's different from MBA, different from PhD. So those are working professionals. They come back to school to learn to cutting edge state of art knowledge and to learn how to do research. Right. So any, any suggestion for them, for the DBA students? Well, uh, nothing other than, I mean, I, I, I'm a great believer in trying to make research more practical and uh, practical is not the right word but research more widely understood and and practice uh more uh, research based not research based but finding based so so you people at the interface of uh of research and practice uh um and you know good research uh, 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 we don't need we don't need practical research we don't need research that says here's what to do in five easy steps we need we need insight research is about insight research about opening people's minds what have i been doing today i'm not solving the problems i'm more trying to get insight into what the problem is and uh, framing it in terms of three sectors um research is about giving creating insight um, and practice is about taking that insight to do things better. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That that's a great answer to uh, end our this session of the seminar. And uh, really appreciate your time, uh, Henry. And we will keep tracking the progress uh, derived from from ideas in your book. Thank you, Victor. So thank pleasure. you so much. Pleasure to see you again. Bye. Bye, Henry. Thank you so much. You're welcome.